What's up guys, welcome to another episode of On The Trail. I'm your host, Matt McAdam of Driving Line, and today we're in West Texas at Big Bend National Park. Now Big Bend is only close to two things, Mexico and the Rio Grande. In fact, right behind me here is Santa Elena Canyon, which is carved out by the Rio Grande itself, with Mexico on one side and the US on the other. Joining me today is Kristen Klein, Editor-in-Chief of Driving Line, and Nitto Pit Crew member, Scott Wolford. We get a lot of inquiries from people about where to go off-roading in Texas. Now, Kristen, you actually moved out here a few years ago from California. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience out here? I've noticed in Texas that most of it is privately owned land. So there's a couple off-road parks in the state. We're so much area in Texas, but not a lot of off-roading opportunities. So Big Bend National Park is a huge space. There's a ton of off-roading trails to take, so I'm excited to check them out today. Scott, you are a native Texan and you have a lot of off-road experience. Can you tell me a little bit about what Big Bend has to offer for the off-roaders? Big Bend is, is huge. It's over 800,000 acres. You can fit Rhode Island into Big Bend National Park. We're gonna encounter some harsh environments today. Uh, gotta be prepared when you, when you come into the park because if you're not, things can go bad quickly. Now, speaking of being prepared, we've got three really capable vehicles behind us to take on this trail today. I've got my 2020 Ford Ranger. It's fully built out with an APG Pro Runner conversion kit. It's also got 35 inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers and King Shocks on there. Kristen, what'd you bring out today? I usually play with classic cars in my garage, so today I brought my dad's 2019 Ford F-150. It's four wheel drive, totally stock, upgraded wheels and tires. We're running Nitto Terra Grappler G2s. Scott, what'd you bring out here for us today? I brought out my 2018 Jeep JL Unlimited. It's sitting on 37 inch Netto Ridge Grapplers on a rock crawler lift and Falcon 3.3 shocks. Equally as important as the vehicles we brought out here today is the gear that we brought with us. Kristen, what'd you bring out with you today? Because it's so remote, you wanna make sure you have enough food and water in case you get lost, bring a little bit extra. You wanna make sure you have at least one gallon of water per person per day. Well, you definitely don't wanna starve out here and you absolutely don't wanna get stuck out here. So Scott, what did you bring with you in your Jeep? So the trail that we're gonna encounter today is not terribly technical, but you still need proper recovery gear. I'm equipped with a winch recovery strap, a bag of tools, and in the event, worst case scenario, I have a GPS communicator that can reach out and get us the help that we absolutely need. You also definitely wanna bring enough fuel with you out here. If you think you have enough, you probably need a little bit more. You also wanna have a good spare tire with you too. So today we're gonna to be running about 30 miles of River Road, and this trail we're gonna be running from west to east, and it actually goes right alongside the Rio Grande, offering you amazing scenery of the river itself and Mexico on the other side, and there's some great historical points of interest along the way. Are you guys ready to do this? Yeah. Yeah. This trip is all about getting to places that I would never otherwise get to. I've had the pleasure through leading Driving Line that we cover a little bit of everything in the automotive world. And even though I came from the classic car side, I've had the pleasure of getting to know off-roaders and see what they do and am always so amazed at how off-road vehicles can do what they do and can do so much extreme stuff. Man, it's, it's actually nothing like I expected. I was expecting it to be pretty flat. There's so much more to see. There's mountains, there's the river obviously, and then you have all these different geological formations and all kinds of different animals. And you know, we saw wild horses earlier. We saw, you know, all kinds hey, of- Hey man, this is Mark. The production vehicle's throwing off more lights than Christmas back here. Okay, any idea what it is? Or you want to stop and check it out? I'm not sure, you better take a look. Okay, we got a scanner tool, so we're gonna pull over and check it out. Copy that. So this scan tool is going to scan the ECU and it's going to see if there's any codes on there that we need to check out. Okay, so it looks like we got something here. We've got a P0441 pending code, evaporative emission control system incorrect purge flow. Let's see if there's P0455, evaporative emission control system leak detected, gross leak. 
So there's two codes. You got 441 and 455. The cool thing about the Innova is it actually tells you what the issue is rather than just giving you a random code for you to have to decipher on your own. It actually tells you what the issue is. And if it's something serious enough, you know, you may want to have it checked out before you go on your next adventure or if maybe you're out here, you can take a look and see if maybe it's something you can fix. But this looks like it's uh, just the EVAP uh, system on these vehicles. Most modern vehicles have an EVAP system on them for the uh, fuel tank. And uh, more often than not, just my knowledge of Toyota vehicles, it's when you overfill the tank, it tends to foul that EVAP canister and that's what's throwing these codes. So honestly, it's not something I'd worry about out here, but I mean, it's a good thing we have this tool here because uh, if we didn't really know what the problem was, then we'd be kind of guessing at what this check engine light is. So we just broke for lunch, we're about 15 miles into the trail, and right behind the trucks here is the Rio Grande. Actually, that hill right there is Mexico. Coming down into this river section, before we actually dropped down into it, we were in the high desert area where there was a lot of slot canyons and rock walls, and you got to see all different types of terrain, everything. Really cool to see the transition from there down into this lower level here. Kristen, uh, is this what you expected Big Bend? Is this what people think Texas looks like when they come out here? You know, I did some research on Big Bend before I came, and I knew to expect some mountains and really cool terrain, but the height of these and just the magnitude of the mountains is much more than I was expecting. I have loved everything we've seen so far. And Scott, you've been here before, but you've never actually wheeled this stretch of Big Bend before. What was your initial impression of the part of the trail that we just completed? You know, the, the majestic scenery in this park is just, crazy beautiful. It, I, I'm always surprised with topping a hill, turning a band, what is next? Yeah, Scott, I agree. The tendency for me certainly was to just hit the gas and go with this go fast truck that I got behind me. But there's a couple reasons why you shouldn't be doing that on this trail. I mean, first of all, it's not safe at all. There's a lot of families out here driving, you know, regular vehicles out here and it's not safe to come flying by them. And secondly, if you don't stop and actually take a look at all the stuff that we saw on the way down at this spot here, you're gonna miss the whole point of this trail. You know what, I can't wait to see what's coming up next. So you guys ready to keep going and see what's around the next corner? Oh, heck yeah. So ready. So just in front of us here to the left is the, uh, the front portion of the Chisos mountain range. And it's one of the more interesting aspects of Big Bend National Park because it actually gets high enough in elevation to show you some of the coniferous trees and pine trees that you wouldn't normally expect to see out in the middle of a desert like this. But this whole area really started to boom back in the 1890s when they actually discovered mercury in some of the mines around here. And in that time, 25% of the U.S.'s production of mercury was being mined out of Terra Lingo, which is right over here. So it's a pretty significant portion of the amount of mercury they were pulling out of this country was coming from just this little corner of it. You know, that last hundred yards of you know, tarmac or pavement, right before you hit the trail for a day or a week or 18 days like I did in Colorado last year, uh, it's just leaving behind the all the stress of work and, and life behind you is, is just such an, an amazing opportunity to recharge your batteries and, and get back in touch with yourself and, and nature and just life in general. Coming out here is like being on vacation for me. Um, for a lot of people, it's like getting on an airplane and flying to like an exotic location like Hawaii or Cancun or something. You know, that's their form of vacation. But for me, just being able to climb into this truck and just disappear into the backcountry for a couple of days, I mean, that's all I need to clear my mind and just kind of have a reset weekend and kind of escape reality for a little bit. All right, well, we just wrapped up a great day of wheeling out here on River Road in Big Bend National Park. 
Right behind me here are the Chisos Mountains, which are the only mountain range in the country that's contained entirely within a national park. And that's just one of the great things that you can see out here on Big Bend when you're out on the trails out here. There's so much diversity in terrain and flora and fauna, all kinds of things you can see out here. Kristen, what did you think of the trail? You know, I wasn't sure what to expect out of my stock vehicle today and me being a newbie. I loved having you guys because I knew I was safe with you and I got to watch and see what you were doing. So, you know, when we were rolling over stuff that I just am not used to rolling over, I still felt confident. And that's one of the greatest things about Big Bend is you can bring a vehicle just like Kristen's here, just a mostly stock F-150 or even any vehicle that's got somewhat of high clearance with a little bit of an all-terrain tire on there. It's recommended to have four-wheel drive on these trails because you never know what you're gonna run into out here, whether it's inclement weather or you run into some trail obstacle that may have not been there the day before. So you definitely, if you're coming out here, you wanna make sure you at least have that much. Scott, you've got a very well-built Jeep, but regardless, that what we were doing out here was really just sightseeing and checking out what Big Ben has to offer. And what'd you think of River Road? You know, this side of River Road was very impressive, um, but being the recovery vehicle and just following you and your Ranger and following Kristen and her stock F-150, I was just super impressed with how well those vehicles did out here. Yeah, absolutely, I'd have to agree with you. And really having your, your Jeep with us was also another safety net that I love to have. I, my number one rule for off-roading is always go with a friend, never go alone. And it's always great to have some great people on the trail with us. Of course, uh, my truck is also overbuilt for a trail like this. You know, this wasn't really an obstacle-driven trail. This is something that you wanted to come out here and just experience with your family, with your friends. You can spend a whole weekend out here. You could probably spend a whole week out here if you wanted to. So that's really the, the drive that brings people out to this corner of Texas. And it's really a unique environment to bring your off-road truck. And lastly, I'd love to thank Nitto and Driving Line for having us out here on the trail. We had a fantastic time out here wheeling today. And if you guys love watching this video, please like, comment, and subscribe below. And if you guys have a suggestion for a trail that we should try out next, let us know in the comment section. We would love to hear about it. But that's gonna do it for us today, you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the trail.